Hi, everybody. Welcome to Talking Cars with Consumer Reports. We have a very special podcast for you. In this episode, we talk solely about the Tesla Model S. I'm Tom Mutchler. I'm Gabe Chenar. And I'm Jake Fisher. So, how did the car do? The car did very well. Um, I would say we were surprised how well it did, but as soon as we drove the, car, drove the car, we knew something was up with this. I mean, it just did so many things really well, being really fast, being really fuel efficient and everything. Um, the final score of a 99, I mean, just put it in this perspective, this car performed better than any other car we've ever tested. Um, that's really something. It is truly a remarkable car. And beyond the fact that, uh, I mean, it just uh, outperforms just about everything. I mean, it's quick, it's, it handles well, it rides well, it's quiet, it's super quiet. There's something eerily quiet about it, how it kind of sucks you in and, and, su and the speed and no engine buildup, no, um, no noise. I mean, it's such a long list of, of attributes is. That, that, is there something that really stands out for you of, uh, with this car? I mean, it's such a long list. Can, can you pick one thing that just, wow. Uh, yes, there is like a, an underlying theme here that this car, I mean, the people who designed this car, they just questioned every, everything. They challenged everything. I think they threw away the Federal Motor Vehicle Standard Book <laughs> or probably never had that because everything is so innovative about this car. For instance, I mean, no um, um, physical emergency brake, uh, no actual start button. Open the door, get in the car, put your foot in the brake. I know you want to start. I, I know you want to go. I mean, I mean it, open the door, leave the car. <coughs> I know you're walking away. I'm shutting you off and I'm locking the car. If you want to surf the web while you drive, yeah, sure, go ahead. I mean, I get in a Kia Sorento and, and I want to listen to the radio and I have to agree to this lawyer disclaimer screen. Yeah. Uh, they didn't put map pockets on the doors because the stylists like how the you doors You have Google look. Maps right here. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need maps or, maps or your phone. Or, uh, here's a company that can build a spaceship, but they can't make a cup holder that's worth a crap. I mean, right. there's, there's no spare tire because people don't really get flats, run flats, you know, they don't ride well. I mean, so many things, you're right, they, they just, we're yeah. going to do it our way. And that departure from convention is, you got to love that. Yeah, I mean, every car that we get into these days, you, you question things. I mean, I just was in the MKZ and there's a push button now. Lincoln where you, MKZ. The Lincoln MKZ and you press D to go drive but I first have to start the car and then I hit drive. So you start questioning, it's like, well, if I'm putting the car into drive, why don't you just assume that <laughs> I want the engine on? You know, I mean, that would be a nice assumption, just like Gabe says. You know, now we walk away from cars and we're fishing in our pocket and you have to hit lock. I've left the car, no one's in the car, I've gone. Maybe I might want to lock the car. Let's make that assumption. And, and yeah, Gabe's exactly right. It's just like, look, look at this. Just question everything, look at the way that people drive the car, make decisions based on that, not necessarily on just the normal convention that every other car is. I mean, can you imagine, it must be so liberating <coughs> to be a car engineer and work there. I mean, I'm sure they work you like a dog. But on the other <laughs> hand, you get a clean sheet. It's not like, well, you know, we, we've got this old, you know, three-speed automatic you have to stick in to something. You know, y you're not <laughs> wedded to any yeah. of it. You're not wedded to any of these background bad decisions. No, basically you have a flat, huge battery, well, flat as a pancake, that you want to put be between the, the wheelbase, and you build a car around it. You know, so there's no center tunnel. Uh, there's no, uh, the, fl the floor is completely flat, benefiting the rear seat, and that spacious, airy feel. Uh, well, well, and and to, your, to your point, it's like, it, you know, it wasn't like, you know, the car designers were like, okay, here's a platform from the Delta platform, or here's a platform from the Versa, and try to mm -hmm. make this work. They started just, they had the battery, and they built everything. And one of the interesting things is if you look at all the other electric cars that we've tested, you open up the hood, these are electric cars, it looks like there's an engine in there, right? right? Every other car, yeah. Yeah. it's filled, chock full of, you know, bits. Yeah. You flux see capacitors the inverter or and inverters, the right. onboard charger <coughs> and the 12 volt battery. And in the front of the Tesla, it's open. It's, well, you can put, put your trunk. suitcase. You in. put a large yeah. suitcase in, yeah. And then in the back, you got that third row seat. I mean, that's or a huge hatch. It's it's something that that, that <laughs> fascinates me. Is that yeah. this car is probably one of the most, if not the most, technologically advanced car you can buy now. Yet it is the closest thing to an old Ford LTD station wagon. <laughs> I mean, it is you know to to have rear facing jump seats in so, the back. It's 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 like so, retro. Retro future. Well, you look at it, it's like, you know, all these decisions that a lot of automakers have said, 
No, people don't want that because that reminds them of a station wagon. No, people don't want hatchbacks. You know, that, we tried that. That didn't work. They put all these things in here. We have that rear-facing seat, which was just about disappeared from most cars these days, which totally makes sense, totally functional. We have a hatchback, which makes it very functional. I mean, this is a very desirable car. This is a car that looks great. Everyone looks at it and says, this is great. And yet, most manufacturers have steered away from a liftback. You know, the other thing that makes <clears> it desirable to me is, is, you know, not only the practicalities, but y you drive this thing. And, and like, like you said in the open, it just shoves you in the back and throws you forward. I mean, when I was growing up, I wanted to be an astronaut. I wanted to fly on the shuttle. I wanted to ride on the Concorde. Now you're telling us. I wanted to, well, yeah, <laughs> you get to work with me, so NASA's <laughs> loss is your gain. Um, <clears throat> you know, I wanted to fly on the Concorde, but you know, they retired that. Mm -hmm. At least, at least, damn it, I get to drive a Tesla Model S. And, and I wish, you know, I love this job, and I wish more people had that opportunity to get in that Tesla, point it down the track, and just stomp it, and go to 80, 90 miles an hour. It, it's awesome. Yeah, I mean, all the past EVs that we tested, electric vehicles, um, you know, as much as you appreciate them and you admire them, um, there's no real passion there. I mean, you can't see yourself driving. Uh, the, the focus, uh, the, I could see yeah, myself driving the focus, nice car, the focus yeah. electric. But, Still, the range, the the whole bit, um, but the Tesla. I mean, driving is just fun. Yeah. You know, I mean yeah. that no mm -hmm. engine weight over the front axle makes turning so immediate, so the I low mean, center it, it of just gravity handles with such enthusiasm. Yeah. Yeah. And the ride. I mean, it's 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 not going to beat you up. I mean, Ride's I mean, I terrific. get to the Panamera sometimes, the Porsche Panamera, Porsche Panamera. and uh, I feel like you know, this, uh, I might be too old for this car. And also, that that car's cr you know, the, the Panamera is it's itself a huge car, yet it's cramped inside. You know, uh, th the control. <laughs> I'm amazed to say this. The controls are easier in the Tesla. I mean, that's another place they they totally went their own way. They this this is on your dashboard. Double uh, this. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> double this. And I admit, <clears throat> as the human factors guy at the track, I heard of this and I'm like, holy crap, no, you can't do that. That's bad, but they worked it out. You know, it, it's more proof that you can't just judge a technology because of technology. People, right, right. We, got, we get criticism all the time, but people said, well, you say this touch screen's good, but my Ford Touch and, and Q, you, you know, you say they're bad. It's all the same. It's not all the same. It's like, a McDonald's hamburger is not the same as a Shake Shack hamburger or, or, or In-N-Out burger. It's all how you do it, and Tesla did it really well. You can make bad mm -hmm. buttons, you can make bad knobs, you can make yeah. bad touch screens, you could also do them well. It's, it's not exactly the technology. I mean, uh, yeah, go ahead. Well, one thing I, I, I just want to you know, go back to is acceleration. We talk about that acceleration and that fun to drive, and you talk about other electric cars. Um, you look at other cars that we've tested, it, and they always feel faster than they are, right? When you test the Nissan Leaf, what does it go? Zero to 60 in like 10 seconds or something. Yeah, 10 but or it, 11, something like that. It feels fast. Initially. It feels fast initially because you hit that gas and you don't, right. you don't hear anything. So that Leaf, while it isn't that fast, it feels much faster. And this car goes zero to 60, it's real fast. I mean, five and a half seconds. And it keeps on going. And it yeah. feels much faster than that. I mean, it is disorienting how fast it is. It's like you're on the front of the Millennium Falcon and just the stars are flying by. I mean, it's. It's something that, I mean, we've, we've driven fast cars before. We've driven cars that go 0 to 60 in five seconds. And there's nothing like this because you don't hear that shift. You don't hear the thing revving up. It's instantaneous all the time. It's, it's mind-blowing, really. It is. Yeah. And um, the car is so enjoyable. Uh, I mean, there's, there's no other way of, of saying it. I mean, you just want to drive. You look at the car. You, it makes you want to drive that car. And uh, it, just admiring it. The technology, the innovation, it's a, it's a car that satisfies on all levels. I mean, we're, we're raving about this car, but... We're sort of like... Right. Yeah. We, we, we might like we're, it. We might yeah. like it a touch. I mean, we're <laughs> not going to whitewash the limitations. Well, I mean, yeah, there, yeah, are, there, there are real issues here. Sure. Right. And uh, like any other electric vehicle, there is a range issue, although less so in this car than in any, any other electric vehicle. Yeah, I mean, you should buy it with the giant battery. Yeah, you just, so just that's take the, forward band. Sure, sure, that's that's the way to go. The 85 kilowatt hour, but still, you know, in the winter, 180 miles, and now 225 miles to 230 miles we're getting in this uh, nicer weather now. But still, I mean, uh, it's not a gas tank that you get four or five hundred miles out of it, and you can jump in the car without planning, without uh, knowing where you're going to charge. 
and drive from here to Ohio. I mean, you took advantage of the supercharger station. I did. Which isn't, I, isn't far it's, from it's, where you it's live. It's wonderful, yeah. I mean, you go in Milford, Connecticut, and you plug the car in for half an hour. You check your iPhone you, and then get answers. Have some, some Sbarro some pizza. Emails. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't like that. Okay, good. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> Keeps you trim. Good, okay. <laughs> But anyway, I mean, you, you do uh, something for half an hour, you get uh, half the, the charge in the half hour. And I it's mean, free. I mean, it's free, yeah. Porsche isn't paying for your premium <coughs> fuel, you know. Hell no. <laughs> or your premium oil. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, our, our Panamera likes oil a bit. Um, yeah. But, I mean, the, we've had some teething issues, too, with the car. And we're not alone, because when I met uh, other uh, Tesla Model S owners at that EV rally that I participated in <coughs> uh, a couple of weeks ago, um, um, some of them showed me here, this is where, where my uh, windshield crack is, which is about right. like an inch yeah, from where ours was. Uh, another one had this uh, clunk at parking speed that we have now. And um, um, the so the we're, radio, we're, the radio doesn't work quite um, right. Yeah, the radio I think got uh, with the 4.4 uh, version, the, the software specs. version that they uh, sent us through the cloud, I think that got fixed. I don't know if it's but, perfect. But, 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 but I mean, fixed. imagine. I'm going to rave about a car again, but, <laughs> you know, again, you download upgrades. It, it's yeah. a giant computer. Well, what's interesting about it is, yeah, it's not perfect, but how you deal with those issues is different. So, like, if you're a normal car and there's a problem with it, what do you do? You, you drive it to the dealership and you drop it off there and they try to figure out what's wrong and then you go back to the dealership. Yeah. And one of the issues with this is there aren't a whole lot of dealerships around. There is no dealer period, because you deal directly with the manufacturer, with Tesla, and they have service centers. Which they're fighting over, because they, they, they don't want to have a franchise dealer. They don't want Billy Bob Mega Dealer, you know. They don't want to deal with them. They want to cut out the middleman. They want to cut out the BS. Exactly. And if you're reinventing a car and a car company, why should you have a dealership? So, I mean, the way this works is, instead of going to that dealership, you go and they pick up the car and they fix it, and they return it to you, yeah. and you and get they give a loaner. You a loaner. <laughs> and you get a loaner. You don't have to go to the dealer and deal with this stuff. Deal. Yeah. And the <laughs> other, I mean, the other issue is, you know, are these, these updates. I mean, it's unbelievable. You know, you don't have to go to get an update or on this thing. You know, overnight, this car comes up, and it's got more features, and they, they work something out. And like you said, with the, um, with the radio, initially when we bought it, we had some problems with the radio, you know. From the sky, they went and they updated when, our when, car and they fixed When it. we bought it, it didn't have voice commands for navigation. Now, now they're terrific. Now th yeah. they're, they're, they're close to Siri. You know, you just say where you want to go and it, right. it works. You got to say, the company's been very responsive in, in trying to, 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 to fix things. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the, the company looks uh, like it's making money and the stock looks like it's pretty good. They're outselling uh, the Volt. Yeah. Well, they're I mean, also which isn't saying much. Well, they're also outselling vehicles in that class. I mean, they're outselling vehicles like the S-Class Mercedes, the 7 Series BMW, expensive cars like that. They're actually, and there's a waiting list, and then they would sell more if they called the make more. But, but is that sustainable? I mean, you know, are, are they going to well, keep selling them? Well, these, or is it just it's, first adopters who are rich? Who well, I mean, there, a there's a product plan. So, I mean, yes. it's not going to be the Tesla Model well, S. It'll well, be the, yeah, the, right. the Model the X, X comes based on that. And the third and then one. they come down the price uh, positioning. Into a forty thousand R BMW gonna be three series competitor. Extremely interesting when that happens. Yeah. Um, speaking of the radio, um, we like tuning knobs, right? Mm -hmm. But it's not like the Tesla doesn't have one. It has that bar that you swipe, and it, it, it gives you the facility to do manual tuning, even though it's right. not a traditional physical. You know, it, you're right. Um, and the thing is, you know, it uses those swipe gestures that you know tablets, tablets, right. and your phone do, but. You know, you get it into Q. You get into, um, I was doing this in Impala. You mean the, the new Impala. Cadillac user experience. You, you mean the crimes, crimes, crimes upon ergonomics. Crimes upon ergonomics. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> GMPR loves you. Um, <laughs> you know, the thing is, it's all how you implement this stuff. It works in the Tesla. You know, the, 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 you get a response when you do this. It works exactly as you plan it to. I, I still think it's a bit distracting for when you're driving a car. Oh, I, I, but, but, but it works. When uh, my wife sits next to me with that thing and she sees me glancing at things, she's like, oh, this is so Gets distracting. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's so alarming. <laughs> so, I mean, we kind of touched on this with, with the price. You know, right now, none of us are going to buy, none of us can go buy a Model S. It's, you know, our car was $89,000. We yeah. could have spent more money. If you had the money. I'd buy that car. Would you buy that car? Yeah, I'd buy that car. 
And you know, speaking of yeah, the even price, the company's not that old. There aren't that many dealers. You don't know resale. I mean, Musk again is saying, you know, this will have the best resale in the class. Who knows? I don't know. I'd buy it and I'd keep it, and not worry about the resale value. Huh. Uh, anyway, speaking of the price, though, I mean, it's it's important to to say that when you look at other electric vehicles, Nissan Leaf, uh, Ford Focus, I mean, they're like thirty-five, forty thousand dollars. You compare them to their uh, peers, another hatchback that's conventional, and they're like eighteen, twenty thousand dollars. Here, you take that Model S compared to an Audi A7 or a Porsche Panamera, mm -hmm. you can get those cars at ninety thousand dollars. I mean, that's on par with other conventional competitors. That's an interesting point, and and that focus is they're selling that stuff probably at a loss, or they're probably not making much money. Probably. Yeah. Uh, by the way, we have one for sale. I mean, well, well, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, our, our, fo yeah, our focus. Please. Yeah, please, please buy our, our <laughs> Mr. Bishi uh, IMAP. No one, no one wants the, maybe the we golf give cart. Give it away with a subscription, maybe or something like. Free that. with the you buy the Tesla. Yeah. Free with the Tesla. <laughs> give you. Would you buy? Would you buy a Model S? If I was in the market for that price of a car in a heartbeat. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and just, just like Gabe says, you know, you look at. I mean, another way to look at it is look at the price of those other electric cars for forty grand. You know, I mean, to get an electric car, or you could get a lot of car for forty grand. At ninety grand, you look at the other options. Yeah, this is the one I'd buy. Has the Tesla Model S changed our our, our outlook on other cars? I mean, it, it hasn't moved the benchmark. <clears throat> I mean, um, it, you know, it's, I, it's it's nearly pegging the score. You know, at, at I, mean, I, I think it's changing in many ways. You know, and and it makes you really question all these different things in other cars. Why do they make you go through this? Why do they make <laughs> you hit the start and the thing and sign the release before I could change the radio station? <clears throat> it, it changes what you expect, and and you know hopefully other car manufacturers will, ta will take this into account and say, well, we don't have to do this exactly the same way. Just because I mean, it's been that way for a hundred years doesn't mean we're right. You know, I mean, all this potential is very exciting. You know, it's just the fact that you can change stuff in a car, you can, you can rewrite what you're doing. Yeah, you can choose your own screen if you want the radio up and the energy down or the navigation up, but depending on it's it's so it's such a breath can, of fresh you, you air. You can buy it in the mall. You can buy it sitting at your dining room table. I mean, the whole buying experience is is so innovative too. I mean, I bought that car on my laptop basically. You know, from the convenience of my couch. You know, I mean, one important th thing is that they're not the only manufacturers that's changing things. So we see other manufacturers all the time. They're changing the way you shift the car. They're changing the way you can configure it. But the difference here is that they're making things better necessarily rather than making things worse. And you see a lot of the other manufacturers have changed for change's sake. Right. Maybe it's changed for style or changed just to be different. But here they're changing things that actually makes the car easier to live with as opposed to more complicated. Well, I mean, I think that's, that's the thing is that obviously this is very thought through. You know, this, this is, you know, th they were able to question all, all the normal conventions. They were able to, to, to improve upon the state of the art. And, and there's something very refreshing. There's something very exciting about that. So obviously testing the Model S has been very exciting for us. Uh, we enjoy the car. It's a fascinating car. And we hope you've enjoyed this podcast. Thank you so much for listening. Thanks for watching. Thank you.